So, I mean, I feel like for, for huge Frank Zappa fans, this is a really interesting book because on one hand, it's obviously a very intimate and behind the scenes look at his private life, but you're also very candid about his shortcomings. And there's a lot of kind of resentment and bitterness that percolates up in this book, but that's not the overall theme. Like it's actually a very uplifting and, and, and heartfelt story. And I'm wondering, was that something that was conscious when you sat down to write this book? Because there, there's so many aggrieved tell-all books by celebrity offspring, you know, from Mommy Dearest et al. And this is not that book. I mean, is that something that you consciously chose to avoid, or is this really just an honest reflection of how you've learned to accept your childhood? Oh, I believe me, I wrote the 148,000 word uh, just rage attack uh, version, and then I tempered it and tempered it and tempered it. I mean, I, I tried to write it honestly like a police report, just, just the facts, ma'am, and just uh, let the reader have the experience of being plopped into that house and and uh, put to bed. What was it like growing up with Frank Zappa's father? Was it wild? Yes, but not maybe in the way you think. <laughs> Uh, the other piece of it was um, that when a, when a father, so, so my dad was essentially my soulmate. He was my favorite person in the world, and yet he was quite rejecting, not, not from meanness, but from busyness and from enjoying his own expression. And his, so his first love was his, his work, maybe, maybe second love, blowjobs from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> the third love, the studio. I, I'm, I'm joking, but uh, but it's also but, not. But, but not thing, really, yeah. Yeah, but the, the, but the thing about it is that when a dad really loves a daughter, because I had no, uh, there, there was there were no complications between he and I. So when a dad really loves a daughter almost more than he loves his partner, his wife, it it triangulates the mother and the daughter relationship, and it's it it creates tension and a complexity there and then as a daughter I both loved and hated my father for the for the positionality do you know what I mean so so kind of uh, talking about all these complicated uh, paradoxes I, I really had to keep the writing pretty pretty I mean I tried my best to keep it simple and not have resentment to just try to say this is this is this is what it was like I mean, the, the, the interesting dynamic of, of your mother, Gail, having to compete with you for your father's attention and, you know, that, that triangle that you just described, did you understand that as a kid or was it just you didn't understand why you couldn't get the support from your mom and dad, like a, a traditional family? I, I just felt it in my, in my stomach, in my heart, in my body. I just felt these things. I, I, maybe I couldn't name it as triangulation, but I could name it as, hey, he's paying more attention to, like I could see it in terms of like levels, more or less. I think, I think we all can do this. We can yeah. feel something's off. You can certainly tell when something is feeling good and, and if it's not, then something's off. Um. You know, because throughout this book, you really describe a really a chaotic, kind of full throttle, unconventional household. You know, everything from the swearing, how your parents felt that there was no such thing as dirty words, only vulgar thoughts, or the, you know, relative exposure to, to nudity and sexuality in the house, or how you only called your mom and dad Gail and Frank. And, you know, it's not too far into this book that I started to realize that, you know, you calling your parents by your first name, it's not just part and parcel to a progressive household, that there's something much deeper going on. And, you know, literally, it's till the final pages of this book where the word mom is actually written on the page. And in a way, that kind of gets to the heart of what this book is really about. I mean, could you explain that a little bit? Yeah, uh, thank you for, uh, for noticing that. It's when, when your first bully is your mother and she doesn't want you to call her mom, uh, you, you, there, you get very early on, there is no mother here. There's not going to be somebody bringing you soup when you're sick or comforting you when you're sad about something. It was almost like waking up in a, in a, in a not a corporation exactly, but, but something that doesn't, that, that has the feeling of a, of a, a, 
all of the warmth of a, of a dentist's waiting room. 